Three years ago, I made a video entitled Don't Drink the Quantum Kool-Aid, a warning to potential enthusiasts of a particular vague pseudo-scientific interpretation of quantum physics and Eastern mysticism, during which time the video has become one of my most viewed and subsequently most commented, and as such has created the inevitable controversy. Well, it's three years on and the death pangs of YouTube are now becoming so deafening that even the loudest bloggers screaming at the tops of their voices in unison fail to draw your attention. So I feel it's time to make a video before it's too late. Obviously, my views have altered, in part due to some unanswered philosophical problems of what some may call reductionist or eliminativist materialism but also due to some of the potential merits of a quantum theory of mind. Technical points aside, as I tried to stress but had not stressed clearly enough, my gripe isn't with a the quantum theory of mind per se. It's with the smallest subgroup that have emerged, and these charlatans basically piggyback off the work and respect of real scientists with the use of pseudo-scientific jargon and sell you a new age self-help book. I now think that there may be some merit to the idea that quantum effects occur in the brain, but ironically, not for the reasons that what the bleep had presented to me. Not for some tiresome attack on materialism as denying the spiritual or some appeal to an ill-conceived analogy. It's in fact through an appeal to the physicalist view that the world is described by the laws of physics, and the argument runs as follows. We are physical beings. Our bodies and brains are subject to the laws of physics. Quantum effects are known within the laws of physics. Therefore, our bodies and brains are subject to quantum effects. This seemingly primitive argument can be taken even further if you're willing to accept additional premises. I believe that the distinction between macroscopic and microscopic quantum effects is a, entirely arbitrary. There's not some cut-off point etched into reality at which quantum effects no longer matter in Einstein rules. It's more of a continuum. The larger the object, the less likely it will behave like a quantum object. In the world at large, you can't get away with a speeding ticket by telling an officer that he couldn't be entirely sure where you were and how fast you were going because of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. But it is a matter of degree. Doing away with the dichotomy between macro and microscopic effects enables one to see that quantum processes could indeed affect the brain, and if this is so, then the ruthlessness of natural selection will have more likely produced creatures that use some of these naturally occurring processes to their advantage. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. What the bleep actually misinforms people about what quantum physics is. It cites experiments which have not been replicated and makes extraordinary claims which are not supported by evidence. But that is not to say that everybody who was interviewed is by definition a charlatan. There are many things that what the bleep says that are supported by evidence and many of the academics featured are well respected within their given fields. But the movie creates a narrative that generally misleads the ill-informed. My original video was not intended to be a smear campaign on some potentially paradigm-smashing idea. It was a warning to those that did not know the science. In fairness, a reasonable counter-argument on this point tends to be, well, at least it gets people into the real stuff, or, well, it's not for physics professors, it's for the public, and so on. And sure, popular science cannot go into the detail of academic science. But look at Sagan or Rattenborough scientifically accurate and informative to the layman, and poetry to the expert, we don't need to distort the truth to make science interesting.